Hi there, welcome to church today. This is Beautiful Place Parish, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Christ Church. Uh, and I'm presenting a word to you today, God's mind for this week. My vision is to give you God's word uh, and God's way and God's will in a balanced, Bible-based perspective so that you can be heavenly minded and utterly relevant. Please, don't let this message die. Listen to it again. Share it with others. Click that notification button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll be blessed as you do. Happy and blessed are you if you do the work in Jesus. That, <coughs> that we... I remember one day I was at work and God was warning me about one of my girls about um, allowing online internet to parent my children. So. And I came home and I began to ask questions and I discovered that the warning was right. I'm talking about maybe two or two or three, two years ago or thereabout. I had to place restrictions how long they can spend on the internet every day. I have to intentionally for the younger ones, we just give by them for not because we could not give them more. So I'm going to, there are so many openings in our life, especially for us that we are in the West. You don't buy data, there's Wi-Fi, and there's phone. You just give it to those kids. They are not, there's no restriction on which site they can visit, what they cannot do. And some of these children are even more intelligent than some of us. The way their brain works is different from the way some of our brain works. And before you know it, you'll be battling unbelief in the life of your children, not knowing that it is the problem that we have created for ourselves. I think that's a good one, Mitchell. The Lord bless you for, you know, being sensitive enough to quickly close the door that the enemy wanted to use. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, saying that we're going to pray, she told me Luke is still not very okay. That's why. Justin had to stay with him this morning. So we just lift up that family in prayers and some other family that are still strong. Can we just pray for them? John was uh, is out of Christ Church with his family also for a business trip. So let's just pray for all those kind of all those families like that. And uh, but in particular, let's pray for Luke. Yeah. That we want to see him next Sunday. We want him healed. In the name of Jesus. Rasi ta kalia ba shen de lehe, ma rasi te ke yele bo zu kalia, ma shen de lehe, re bo zu kalia ba shen te ke yele bo, rasi te ke yele bo. We take authorities, particularly can we take authority over the spirit, the box that is flying around, people coughing, people catching cold, and all kind of sicknesses. <coughs> There's also hay fever. Yeah. <coughs> So can we just take authority over yes, these things? Uh, this are spirit of infirmity that weakens people during spring, yes, during summer. Father, we ask for the precious blood of Jesus. Marase teke yele bo zo kalia. Marase teke yele bo zo kalia. Jesus, you have been wounded for our iniquities, you have been bruised for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon you by your stripes. We declare we are healed. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we say by the blood of Jesus? I secure myself. I secure my children. I secure my family. I secure every member of this church, especially in this ember month. In the name of Jesus, can we do that by the blood of Jesus? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we just want to lift up uh, the Usendo family into your hand. We ask, O oh God, that by your stripes, they are healed in Jesus' name. You make it 
war to cease unto the end. Thank you, Father, for helping them to identify that crack in the wall and to block it immediately. Father, we ask that victory and health be given to every member of that family in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for uh, John and his family that are away out of Christ Church, that you give them safety. Yes, that you give him help, yes, that you give him a breakthrough business-wise in the yes, name of Jesus. Yes, Pray for everyone, Lord, that is on the way or that couldn't make it for genuine reason this morning, that you will help and bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, here we are as a church, and we ask, O oh God, that you will teach us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our eyes and open our understanding. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Clap your hands and celebrate. We are all welcome to service in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome, man, in Jesus' name. Amen. So that is, um, um, how do I say it? That is Sister Diola's mom. So, can we just welcome my sister? Allah looks like daddy. Praise, <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You are welcome, man. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Amen. That's what for the first daughters look like anyway. You see the first? First daughters always look like their daddies. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Clap your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. Um, we have a very good laptop. I don't know what happened with the Charger. <laughs> it's a brand new laptop and it's a, it has to be a year warranty on it. Very expensive laptop. And it will charge this morning. So we'll get it to PB Tech on my way home and see what happens. So the Bible, the app, everything is on it. So if you have your, I've always encouraged us to come with our real Bible. It is time for our real Bible. Am I right? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are reading an interesting story this morning, the story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. So if we could stand up to read together. Luke chapter 19. Um, we will not finish all of the verses, so we will stop at some point. I want to soak in and be blessed by the story of Zacchaeus. Are we together? Okay, let's go. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, and come down, for today... I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and come down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let's look at what Jesus preached at Zacchaeus' house. Verse 11, let's go. And as they had these things, he had it and speak a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return 
And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded this servant to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Verse 16, let's read together. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, and have authority over ten cities. Have thou authority over ten cities. Verse 18. And the second came, saying, Lo, thy pound had gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. I'm a good saver. For I fear thee, because thou art an austy man, and thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest thou that is not so. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knew that I was an austere man, and taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, then givest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might require mine with own usury. And he said unto them, Stood by, take from him the pan, and give it to him that had ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. For I say unto you, that every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken away. May the Lord bless the reading of the word in Jesus' name. I said, may the Lord bless the reading of the word. Have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Say to the person next to you, if you don't use it, you could lose it. Say to the person, on the, which, which way did you turn to the other time? Turn to your other way. This time around, I say, if you, use it, if you don't use it, you could lose it. Lose it. See, talents, gifts, whether spiritual or physical, are like that story that we read, and it's the biblical principle: what you do to use, you could lose. So, whatever gifts or talents or abilities, whether normal or special, that God has given to us. It is important that we keep using it. Do you also know that if you use it, say if you use it, you use it. it will multiply. It will multiply. I mean, I mean. Uh, that's the truth. If you use the gifts that God has given to you, you will see yourself multiplying in grace or multiplying in the ability to use that gift. Even the gift of the Spirit. If you grow spiritually, you get born again, you start manifesting the gift of the Spirit, and then you become so carnal, let me put it that way, at a particular point in your life, that the Holy Spirit could not pass through you again. The gifts can become rusty. So it is important that you keep opening your, up your spirit, man, your soul, your spirit for the Lord to be used. Praise the name of God. I don't know why I keep, I feel keep saying it. If you don't use it, you could lose it. Say, my father, my father. Help me to use what you have given to me. Make it a prayer point in the name of Jesus. Father, help me to use what you have given to me. Help me to use what you have given to me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, I believe and confess. As I will be taught the word of God today. Say, my mind, you'll be fruitful. My spirit, you'll be alive. Say, my spirit, you'll be alert. My body, you be in health, my understanding will produce results. My life, you be you will not be the same again. Say I'll be blessed, I'll be changed, I'll not be in chains, I'll be transformed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we take authority over every strange board in the air and the spirit that eats the world. I ask Lord that your word will profit every hearer this morning. Even though there are basic things, there are things that we know. I pray that it will come afresh and come alive, not just in our midst, in our hearts and in our lives, in Jesus' name. Devil, you cannot have your way. So we take authority over you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. I'm speaking, even though I'm not a scientist, but I received a revelation to share with you. And I'm not going to talk about it for so long because there's, there's something you know. But perhaps, I don't know why God wants to remind us. It is the basic of what it entails to be a Christian. If you open your Bible to, so I'm saying I'm not a scientist, but I'm teaching on DNA. You, could, you can't get it to the screen. What happened? You can't find it in the laptop. The DNA of the Almighty. That's it. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> I thought she was projecting it the other time. Okay, if you open your Bible with me to 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to just, we will read verses 1 to 5 together. I'll be reading from here as I talk about something that I'm not so vast about, but I know a little bit about it to share it with you spiritually. In, in verse 1 it says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that are obtained like precious faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and mercy be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world to lost. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, say the DNA, the DNA. of the Almighty. Of the Almighty. And I'm going to be using the story of Zacchaeus to illustrate it. Zacchaeus is not, uh, obviously I don't think Zacchaeus will be as tall as me. <laughs> Maybe half my height. <laughs> because the Bible says he was a short man. And I don't know, what do you think would be the significance of climbing? Why, why, why would they tell us the name of the tree, Sycamore tree? What help will that give us? What spiritual knowledge will that impart unto us? How tall he is? Why is sycamore tree? What is special about sycamore? Huh? I think the sycamore tree. I think the sycamore tree must be a very tall tree. Because if you climb a purple tree, it's gonna fall down. <laughs> If he climbed the banana tree, that would not help him either. Some mango trees are not very tall. Some other fruit trees are not very durable. But I think the sycamore tree must be strong and tall enough. Thank you very much. Let's clap for mommy. That's a good Bible study inside. The sycamore tree may, must be strong and tough and uh, tall enough to be able to sustain the weight of Zacchaeus. Can I tell you in life, spirituality too, there's a lesson about it. You need something, somebody, somewhere that is strong and tall enough to sustain your weight spiritually. Clap your hands and celebrate. <laughs> if you will see Jesus, if you will have a revelation of Jesus, you need something that is you know, strong enough and tall enough for you to be able to have that divine insight. You know, I remember when we were younger, when we were in church, and when we, I mean, when, when I was in the campus fellowship, there was this song that one day the campus choir just performed, and I just loved it. Was it the campus choir? I wouldn't know. Brother Zacchaeus, come down. How many of you know that song? Have you heard the song before? From the sycamore tree. You can sing it with me. Brother Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. Brother Zacchaeus, come down from the sycamore tree. For salvation is come unto you. Oh, Zacchaeus, from the sycamore tree. Brother Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. Brother Zacchaeus, come down from the sycamore tree, for salvation is come on. Now that comes a prophetic time in your life when you got to leave what is strong and tall enough to give you the first revelation to see Jesus. Now it is time to come down from the sycamore tree and open your house to Jesus. 
For if you see it and you don't have him, are you with me? For if you see him and you don't have him, then you will not experience him. Clap your hands and say, So there comes a prophetic kind that you don't just stay and listen all to the taste of divine exploit, of revelation, of how to manifest this, of how to walk in this, or how to do this. And all the teachings, you keep listening to them. You are having the revelation. But there comes a time that you need to step down from the tree and actually action what you have received. Come on, say action what you have received. So I'm speaking to you this morning on a subject that you are very aware of, the DNA of the Almighty. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Well, it contains units of biological building blocks called nucleotides. And DNA is a vital, important molecule for not only humans, but most other organisms. DNA contains our hereditary material and our genes, the things that make us unique. What makes you and DNA to be popular, at least for some of us that watch movies, is the fact that two men showed up in the life of a young lady that has a child. And they struggle and they argue. Or you find a child whose paternity is in question. Who all the men just run away and wouldn't hold up to the pregnancy of that child. And what would the medical doctor say? What would the court say? Go for what? Yeah. DNA test. And DNA test will put all the question to rest. Because DNA is that particular part of us that contains our gene. Come on, say our gene. So I'm not talking about that particular element of ours that contains our gene. I'm not talking about that particular element of yours that contains the gene of the Almighty God. Clap your hands and say it. So what will G DNA of the Almighty God stand for spiritually? It stands for what we have in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 where Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What will DNA stand for spiritually it stands for what we have in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises that have been given to every one of us I and you can be partakers of divine nature come on say partakers of divine nature, partakers of divine nature. come on say partakers of divine nature the question is this which of the natures of our our family gene do we manifest? How much of the nature of God radiates through our character, attitude, and lifestyle? See, when I was growing up, when my dad, is it naturally we just speak these things? It just happened, we, there is nothing you can do about it. Then, when my dad stepped into the house from work, Every speck of death on the floor, my dad will pick it up. And I, have, I, and I found out that it has entered into my nature. I'm trying to suppress it, but I can't. Sometimes I try to hide it when I step into my house with a smile. But, you know, the thing will just come out. <laughs> you, do you know how you want to hide the nature that you inherited from your parents? With a smile? Now, that is a mild one, am I right? Yeah. What about the nature of violence? Yeah. What about the nature of immorality that you know is stemming from a particular tree line? Yeah. It is time to get rid of those ones that can send you to hellfire. Yeah. It is time to get rid of those ones that will not make you to have good relationship with people. Yeah. Come on, say partakers of divine nature. Partakers of divine nature. When the nature that you have inherited from your family tree becomes dead, <laughs> or silent, inactive, and the nature that you have inherited from the scriptures, from God, from Jesus Christ, become prominent, then you are partakers of divine nature. Clap your hands and celebrate. 
Come and say the nature of God. So what would be the DNA of the Almighty spiritually? It will mean holiness of heart and life. Open your Bibles with me, if you will, to John chapter 3, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Praise the name of the Lord. What will be the nature? What will be the nature of the Almighty God? It will be what we have in John chapter 3. That is where the nature of the Almighty God starts. He says, and Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. Everybody say the born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you, you know that we don't give mental answer to being born again. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual experience. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that if you are not born again and you are listening to us this morning, may you experience that wonderful experience, that, that wonderful encounter in the name of Jesus. Amen. What will be the nature of God? Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. If you find it, you can read it for us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Which no one will ever see the Lord. Hallelujah. Follow peace with all men. Say it with me. Say follow peace with all men. Follow follow peace. Peace with all Every men. nature that does not want to follow peace with all men is not the nature of God. Okay, come, church, look at me. Follow peace with all men except your sisters in the house. Do you know that it's easier to follow peace with, outs with outsiders than family members? You want to give it to her. You want to give it to him. Follow peace with all men except your husband. Follow peace with all men except your wife. Follow peace with all men except your brothers. Oh, okay, follow peace with all men except people in the church because they are holy like Jesus. Am I right? You know, there's, there's a way we, you know, check. people get offended easily with each other in church and they jump out of that particular church. Because they expect that angels worship in church, am I right? Yeah. Yes, sinless people worship in church, am I right? People who don't even get angry are in church, am I right? Yeah. Uh, deception. <laughs> Follow peace with all men, including those in church, including our family members. Can you look at me and look at the person next to you and say, anything that does not want you to follow peace with all men is not the nature of God. Look at the person next to you. Anything that wants you to be in strife, in fighting, in disagreement with anybody around you is not the nature of God. Do like this. Use your left hand. He said it is time to push those nature out. Use your left hand to do it. Push them out. With your left hand. I said push them out. With the blood of Jesus. Push them out. With the power in the, of the promises of God. Push them out. Now it is time to welcome the nature of God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and celebrate Jesus. When we have this nature of God, there are some things that will happen between you and others. Rather than frowning, you will smile. That's the nature of God for us. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. That is the definition of the nature of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm reading this scripture so that you know we have so much scriptures that promises us the nature of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I think it's getting hot now. If you can turn, turn it off, that will be fine. Praise the name of the Lord. Our Izibi. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. Number one. Everybody say filthiness of the flesh. Filthiness of the flesh. And filthiness of the spirit. Number two. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God, number three. The day you start cleansing yourself from the filthiness of the flesh is when you stop outward sin. You stop lying. You stop stealing. You stop committing adultery. You stop committing fornication. You change your behavior. You change your lifestyle. That is being cleansed from the filthiness of the flesh. 
but you know that sometimes people can, somebody can stop fornication, stop adultery, stop lying, but the tendency to lie, the tendency to do all those things that you have stopped doing lies within your heart. So, filthiness of the spirit now means that you will now start internalizing and applying the problem of Jesus Christ so that the root of those things in your heart be taken away. That is now the cleansing yourself from the filthiness of the flesh. Now, don't ever believe that holiness means angelic perfection. Don't ever believe any preacher that tells you holiness means sinless perfection. Don't ever believe if anybody tells you that holiness means that you will be like angels. No! That's why it is necessary to perfect holiness in the fear of God. Because there will be some times that you will find yourself sleeping. Sleeping, I mean. Sleeping, I mean. And then you will say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. And then you will say, no, I'm growing. Now, if you sleep last month and sleep the next week and sleep next week and sleep next week and sleep next week, then that is not, that means that you don't have the experience. But if it happens occasionally that you sleep, then you know that you need to keep perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And what made you fall last week? What made you fall last year? Shouldn't make you, make, make you to keep falling again. Amen. Clap your hands and celebrate Jesus. Amen. That's what it means now to say, I'm perfecting holiness yeah. in the fear of God. Amen. I'm perfecting holiness because I have the fear of God. Amen. Because the wicked says in his heart, there is no God. Praise the name of the Lord. What then will be the DNA of the Almighty God? First Thessalonians chapter 4. And I want us to read this together. Open your Bible with me, please. First Thessalonians chapter 4. What then will be the DNA of the Almighty? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 1 to 7. First Thessalonians. Come on, say the DNA of the Almighty. The DNA of the Almighty. He says in verse 1, Furthermore, are you there? Yes. Let's go. Furthermore, furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as he has received the force, how ye ought to walk to please God, so you will abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Come and say, for this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. Praise the name of the Lord. That word sanctification means separation. Separating. Where's your left hand? See, sanctification comes from the root word ajamos, which simply means separation and dedication. So, this is my left side. Everything that is from the left represents what? Sin, darkness, unrighteousness, the Adamic nature, the sinful nature, the angry nature. The corrupt nature, the immoral nature. The Bible says that when you, when you are thinking of sanctification, the first thing is not to dedicate. The first thing is to separate. Come on, say separate. 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 Sanctification starts from separation from what is unclean, what is unholy, what you, what you know gives you guilt, what you know, you know interfere with your relationship with God, what makes you not to be able to pray with boldness. So when you separate, you don't stay in the middle. You now move to the right and dedicate. Come on, say separation, separation. and dedication. Yeah. That is what is called sanctification. Yeah. Separation is man's part. Yeah. Dedication is God's part. Yeah. Separation is man's effort. Yeah. Separation is God's power. Clap your hands. As dedication is God's power. That would be the DNA. Of the Almighty said, This is the will of God that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the loss of concupiscence, even as Gentiles which know not God. May God help us to have this DNA in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, May God have, help us to have this DNA in the name of Jesus. Amen. I talk about four things and then I'll, I'll close the session, hopefully before 12. What then are the traits? Of the nature of the Almighty. As a matter of fact, do you know why we call it regeneration? Do you know why they call salvation regeneration? Do you know what it means? It means that you have a gene that you inherited from Adam, the sinful gene. 
the gene that is corrupted. But when at salvation, when the power of God comes from that gene, it transforms it. And rigid, regime, regeneration. So can you tell me what happened now? Regime. What happens when you say regime? Revert. Revert. It changes that nature supernaturally and gives you the nature of God. It's, it's, not, it's not easy to be, not to be arrogant and pride, proud. When you have a list that others don't have, when you have a grace that others don't have, when you come from a race that you feel is better than others, pride of grace, race, face, and what? There are four. Pride of grace, pride of race, lace, and face. When you think you look more beautiful or handsome, than others. When you even look at some people, do you know that sometimes you'll be looking at the person God wants you to marry and be saying, no, this one is not as beautiful as I wanted. Pride of face. Because you think you are more beautiful or more handsome than the person that God is showing you to marry. Say, Father. Father. Deliver me from pride of face. Pride of grace. Pride of race and pride of lace. Lace is what you wear. When you have more clothes in your wardrobe than others, and you can afford to show them off. Well, the Kiwis are not like that. Anyway, give it to Kiwis every, every day, any time. They are the jeans preacher <laughs> with a casual shirt that is brown on black trousers. <laughs> Nigeria pictures, we are not like that. We like our tie and so clap your hands and celebrate Jesus. <laughs> well, sometimes I dress like that. Sometimes I will keep to my president. May the Lord help us. What then are the traits of this nature of God? There are three of them at least. And then we we'll pray about them. The first one is the first is the traits. The traits is, you see, I've seen Adai's dad's picture. She looks so much like her dad. So much. Her dad is the one that is light in complexion. Her mom is dark. Am I right? Can you see first daughters and their dad? <laughs> I said it. First daughters and their dad, there's something, there's a connection. But, you see, the, the point I'm trying to say is this. As you look like your dad or your mom facially, there are some things that you inherited from those people that are not of God. In those days, when I finished secondary school, I used to be very short. And all of a sudden, I just grew up and became tall. <coughs> then I went to my secondary school to get my result. And one of my teachers who taught me Yoruba shouted and said, So I was a prefect anyway, so I was well known you too. So, so you can grow tall. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, I went, because I wasn't staying with my parents, so I went staying with my parents. And then one day I put on my dad's uh, clothes. We call it uh, Agbada. And I <clears throat> Early in the morning, I finished prayer <laughs> and I stood in front of the house and I was standing. I don't know why I stood in front of the house. <laughs> and some people were passing by. Like, I was like, ah. I almost ran into my house. I wanted to tell them that, look, it's not my dad that is standing, it is me. <laughs> I look like my dad. And, but you see, my dad now. I'm sure those who are making that mistake now will, will be surprised because my dad is as tall as that boy. So I'm way, way taller than him. Genetically, I took my tallness from my grand, granddad, who was a pastor anyway. A catechist, an Anglican catechist. But what am I trying to say? Like, we take some of these traits from our parents. We take some sinful traits as well. The moment we get born again, those traits that we took away from our parents, 
that are not righteous, that are not godly. It is time to push them away by the blood of Jesus. It is time to push them away in the place of prayer. We also take threats from our cultural heritage. Do you know that? We also we also, we take traits from our cultural heritage. The Yoruba kids are entitled. Igbo kids in my country are not entitled. I used to have Igbo friends that come home, and then when we, then when they come home, my mom will finish cooking, and they will say, thank you, ma, thank you, ma. And I'll be looking at those my friends, like, why are you thanking my mom for cooking for you? Yoruba kids will finish eating, and they will just say, yes, it is. you are the one that brought me to the world, so you have the right to feed me. Those natures, that comes from our culture too, that you know. Shouldn't we be appreciative? Shouldn't we be thankful? Yeah. Am I right? Should we, should we live a, a life of being entitled? Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, say the nature of God. As you become a child of God, it is time to begin to think of those things that you have taken away from the nature of your culture, the nature of your society. The nature and begin to ask that the nature of God will replace them. And the first one is repentance. How do we know that Zacchaeus wanted to repent? He wanted to see Jesus. He would invite Jesus into his house, which is a symbolic or uh, prophetic symbol of inviting Jesus into his heart. He will not be deterred by mockers, he will not be deterred by murmurers. How many of you know that Zacchaeus was a civil servant? Do you know that Zacchaeus was a civil servant? Yes. Yeah. What kind of civil servant is he? Tax officer. Should tax officers be rich? No. I used to work in the civil service and I'm, I'm telling you, the people that are richer in my country are the people that work with government. Now you get what I'm talking about. Yeah. Are people that work with government in this part of the world rich? Perhaps, if they do something to expose themselves to opportunities that they block from others. Am I right? Zacchaeus was a civil servant, yet he was rich. And then he wanted to see Jesus. And people said, no, Jesus shouldn't have gone into this man's house. Number two, how do we know that Je the second thing that will show in your life that you have the nature of God is that there will be repentance. Come on, say repentance. The willingness to change from the ways of life that you are accustomed to. The second thing will be righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. righteousness. The first thing that happened immediately that Zacchaeus became, had the nature of God was that he discontinued his fraudulent practices. Zacchaeus was somebody, do you know, it's very simple because I'm in that field. It's very simple. Very, very simple. Very, very simple tax fraud all over the world. How much is your tax? One million. You make hundred million dollars. Okay. Uh, let's say you make one million dollars, and for every income that is so 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 rate, so you pay thirty five percent. So somebody will look at it and say, out of one million dollars, I'm giving two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the government, and the tax agent will come and say, look, fortunately that 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 profession is even tricky because there is tax avoidance and tax evasion. That one is coming to my head. Now. <laughs> the task advisor can teach you how to beat your tax down legally. Yeah. But when they do it dishonestly, that's when the problem comes. But how, what, is the, what is the first way to know that righteousness has come in? Those who Zacchaeus has declared false tax return for. He, to collect money from there. He said, no, from today, if your tax is so, so, so amount, that is how much you're going to pay. That's how we know that Zacchaeus became what? Born again. How can somebody become born again and still be a tax officer that encourages fraud? I've been to, I used to be a troublemaker when I was practicing in Nigeria. And I've been to offices in Nigeria to do tax, what is called tax dispute. And I will see Bible on the table. And I will see the banda. Redeem is not even excluded. Because I've, I've, I've been to a, to a tax deacon that the person was telling me is one redeem deacon or something. And then they will call you back and want to do something that is dishonest. 
<laughs> One day like that, I had that kind of tax dispute. I was so hungry. So, they, we sat down, they called out their boss. I've done my calculation very well. The owner of the business was sitting beside me. She's a woman. And after we, after the, you know, sometimes they are so, because you are not in my profession, so you won't understand. They will ignore evidence and they will push tax liability to people. And it's unfortunate in an environment where people are not enlightened. They will be running Peter, pillar to pull. Hey, 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 they want to shut my business. Why would they shut your business? If you, if you know you're right, like we were studying in the Bible study yesterday. Even in a corrupt environment. So I sat down and I pushed my calculation to them. And I pushed all the evidence to them. And their bosses, was, they were looking at the calculation. And they said, there's no case. Please, can we just go? And then after they left, after maybe five or ten minutes, the boys that did those things, they were now smiling at my uh, client. I said, Madam, Madam, can you give us something? I pressed Madam on the leg. I said, don't give them nothing. <laughs> Let's just walk out of this place and leave these corrupt people alone. Ah, she too, she opened her mouth and said, oh, no, I don't have anything yet. And we just left. Because people just want to be what? Dishonest. And it doesn't matter whether they are in church or they are not in church. What I'm telling you is this. If you are a child of God, that shouldn't be your life. Yeah, amen. Amen. For any reason. Clap your hands and say it. <laughs> Righteousness produces the willingness in us to be non-corrupt. Mm -hmm. For any reason, for any way, for any kind of line at all, in any kind of society. Mm -hmm. Please, if God cannot help you, mm -hmm. if you help yourself, mm -hmm. you are questioning your eternity. Let God help you. And it can help you supernaturally. It can help you naturally. People's debt can be cancelled. People's tax can be what? Offset. Come your hands and say it. Yes. And if he does it, he will give you money to pay it. Amen. Is he not able? Yes, I mean. Is he not able? Then he will be willing to give half of his Heal gotten asset and wealth to the poor. Is that no righteousness? Yeah. Number three, there was restitution, which is part of the traits of this nature of God that we're talking about. He was willing to restitute, to return back all that he has stolen from people. And he told them that, look, he, the guy has amassed so much wealth to the extent that he said, for everyone I took one era from, or one dollar from, I'm going to give you four dollars back. That was righteousness, am I right? Yes. That was repentance, am I right? Yes. That was turning away completely from what is wrong to what is right. May God give us his nature in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse 16. As I close. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse 16. I'm closing. Can somebody read it for me? And Mary, do I exercise myself to have always a conscious void of offense towards God and towards men? Hallelujah. Amen. So what is restitution? The act of what? Apologizing is restitution. The act of apologizing is restitution. Do you know, some unbelievers find it easy to say I'm sorry. Some believers don't even know how to say I'm sorry. Do you think it's the nature of God? No, it's not the nature of God not to say I'm sorry. To write what is wrong. To steal something from somebody before you go born again, and you go born again and you return it back to the person. And if you can't quantify it, try and, you know, talk about it. And if you can't pay it back now, Try and talk about it as well. Perhaps you get forgiven. Praise the name of God. When you have the nature of God, three things are going to be evidence in your life. What is the first one? Repentance. Everybody say repentance. repentance. What's the second one? What's the third one? Willingness to right all wrong. I'm not saying that you will right all wrong to produce your own righteousness. Because you can't right all wrong. There are some of them that you can't even remember. God has forgiven you. 
but the ones that you know that consciously you did, will it be right for Mrs. Potiphar to get born again and still be alive? And still be alive and become a pastor's wife or pastor and do not go to the king and say, I lied that Joseph wanted to sleep with me. What kind of conscience is that? Am I right? Yeah. Will that be right for a child of God? Who lied that somebody raped her? Yeah. And now God gone again and will not try to correct that impression. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong. Christians shouldn't live that way. And that's the place of restitution. I'm not saying restitution replaces righteousness that Jesus Christ gives to you. But to, to the best of your ability, right or wrong. And consciously know that you will live to offend people even as a Christian. Mm -hmm. To practice restitution is to practice what? Continuous repentance and righteousness. Clap your hands and celebrate. Mm -hmm. However, as I close, there is something that is the enemy is going to use to distract, everybody say distract, distract, yes. and attract us from the nature of the Almighty God. Do you know lost is distraction? To some people, lost is distraction. To some people, lost is attraction. It's a spiritual thing. To some people, when they are lost in, they are being attracted. To some people, when they are lost in, they are being distracted. Do you know, you can see a pastor of a small church and he, he carries all the titles of this world. Reverend, Father, Doctor, Apostle. And then you'll be thinking in your mind, which one is this guy focusing on? Is it the title or the work? Even in a big denominational church like this, people are focusing on titles that is distracting them from the work. What about attraction? Attraction can be your own lust. What is attracting you from the nature of God that you want to practice? From the nature of God that you process that you need to live by? Hallelujah. Come on, say lust. Yes. And the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Come on, say lust is defined in three ways. One, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. In Matthew chapter 4, it was evidence in the life of Jesus Christ. When the enemy took him, Okay, when the enemy told him that you are hungry, you are hungry, you've been fasting for 40 days. Now you have the power. Command that this stone become bread. What kind of loss is that, church? The loss of the flesh. The flesh will demand for things that will pleasure the flesh. You are the one that is not going to give it to the flesh to overcome loss. Clap your hands and say it. And it doesn't matter who your status. What about the loss of the highs? When the enemy took Jesus Christ to the pinnacle of the temple and said, John, what is that? That is what? That's not high. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That is pride. He said to him, he said, don't you know he will give his angels charge? And they will bear you up. Why tempt God? Why do for God? Why ask God to do for you what you can do for yourself? Hallelujah. That is, the enemy was tempting him. Have you seen pastors? Have you seen people who call themselves anointed and say, I can use my anointing. I've had pastors and prophets that say they use anointing to kill church members or kill somebody. And I'll be wondering in my heart that this anointing, that this overbloated, overcelebrated anointing that some people boast about as if they have the power to do and undo in people's life, is a lie. Don't let somebody bamboo you with the anointing. It is God that answers prayers. Yeah, amen. No matter how anointed we are, we can pray and God will choose not to answer. Yeah. Who are you to question God? People will overblow and know. So people, so is, do you know that exactly what the enemy was trying to do to Jesus? He said you are anointed. John, angels will guide you. <laughs> I, think, I still can't forget a popular man of God in Nigeria. You know, one time like that, Arm robbers showed up in his house. I've told the story before. And then, when the arm robbers showed up, they pointed the Bible at them. They pointed the 1847 at him, he pointed the Bible at them, and they ran away. When they showed up the second time, some British missionaries were in his house. And then he looked at the window of his house. He said he had Holy Spirit. He said he jumped. So he jumped and broke his leg. People asked him and said, Papa. They call him Papa. 
Say, Papa, I'm going to come to your house first time. And you pointed Bible at them and they ran away. Why did you jump? Said, I had God said jump. <laughs> and I jumped. Hallelujah. They could have killed him. Pride of life. So when the enemy took Jesus and showed him all the glory of the world in a moment of time, what is that? The loss of the eyes. So what is lost? Distraction or attraction? Your own definition of lost. At this stage of my life in ministry, do you know the lost and biting, fighting distraction? I don't know what is your own lost. It could be attraction. But may we overcome every lost by the power in the blood of Jesus. I say may we overcome every lost, lost by the power in the blood of Jesus. Rise up. The Holy Spirit wants us to pray. I say, Father, give me your nature in the name of Jesus. You can only receive this nature by the promises of God. You can only receive this nature by the blood of Jesus. Say, Father, give me your nature. Give me your nature. Push away every nature that is not the nature of God from your heart right now. Begin to push them away. Push them away in the place of prayer. Begin to push them away in the place of prayer. Begin to push them away in the place of prayer. Every nature, every nature, every nature that is fighting God. Every nature of unbelief is, a, is not the nature of God. Begin to pray, begin to pray. My having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let's pray against every nature, every evil nature, every corrupting nature, every distracting nature, every attractive nature. But you know it's actually lost. I want you to begin to pray against it, Lord. Deliver me from every nature that is not of God. Deliver me from the nature of anger. Deliver me from the nature of immorality. Deliver me from the nature of sin. Deliver me from the nature of pride. I want you to appropriate the precious blood of Jesus. I want you to appropriate the precious blood of Jesus. I want you to appropriate the precious blood of Jesus on your heart. Lord, I need your nature. Lord, I need your nature. Lord, I need your nature. Lord, Lord, I need your nature. Lord, I need your nature. What I'm asking you to pray for in simple terms is to pray for holiness of life. Is to pray for holiness of heart. That is the meaning. That is the meaning. That is the meaning of the DNA of the Almighty. The holiness of life. The holiness of heart. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. This is in the Bible. It's not about a church. It's about what the Bible says. It's not about your hearing. It's about your nature. That's what I'm talking about. You can look beautiful but have the nature of God. You can look attractive but have the nature of God. Lord, give me your nature. Lord, extend my nature with your nature. Every nature, every character, every attitude, every utterance, every speech pattern that is not of you. Make us feel like you. Change your heart, oh God. May we be like you. Lord, I want to be like you. Lord, I want to be like you. Lord, I need your nature. Lord, I need your nature. Lord, I need the DNA of the Almighty. I want it to be activated. I want it to be alive. In the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I want you to begin to pre apply the blood of Jesus Christ into your heart. I want you to begin to apply the blood of the grace of Jesus into your heart. Yes, 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 yes. Rebo Zota Kalia, Marshen de Rebo, Rasset de Kerebo Zota Kalia, Marshen de Rebo, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say the name of Jesus. From today, I take on your nature and every nature of sin that is warring and the flesh that is warring in my soul, in my spirit, in my body. Be still by the blood of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'll pray with you. Ezekiel 36. 
in verse 26 says, I love that scripture. If you can open your Bible where you are, soak it in, mark it in your Bible, pray it through, pursue it. As you pursue provisions, as you pursue praying for favor, as you pursue praying for breakthrough, pursue this one too. The Bible says in Lucia chapter 6, verse 12, but there about says, Say to yourself your righteousness, read the mass. Say, Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until He comes and rain righteousness on you. There's a rain of righteousness that God gives to us. Look at verse 26. It says, Read it together with me. Want to go? A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgments and do them for your sins and your iniquity. The greatest part of this nature is that when you have this nature, you are justified. And it says, for your sins and your iniquities, I will remember no more. Put your hands for that revelation. Hallelujah. I'm not here to give up your sin. I'm here to bury it by the blood of Jesus. Look at what this man said. He said, do not be afraid of holiness. It will take away none of your energy, vitality, or joy. Holiness does not take it away. Holiness does not even take away your smile. And he says, finally, let us listen once more to Jesus with all the love and respect that the master deserves. Let us allow his word to unsettle us, to challenge us, and to demand a real change in the way we live. Otherwise, holiness will remain no more than an empty word. Put your hand to your heart, please. If you agree together with me for the nature of the Almighty this morning, or this afternoon rather, if you're watching us online or you are in the service, and you know that you are not born again, if you are born again, fine. We all need the nature of God, so we're going to put our heart into our chest. But in addition, if you know you are not born again, you know you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you know that you have not even started the journey. So, what can we talking about perfection in the journey? Put your hand up as well. But if you are trusting, just as any one of us is trusting for more of God's nature in our life, all other persons will put their hands on their chest. But if you want to be born again as well, put your hand up. Now, for those who want to be born again, say, Lord Jesus, wherever you are watching us, I'm sorry for the way that I've lived. And I've heard your word today. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my life. Please, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. And give me the power to go and see no more. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray, Lord, that everyone that has confessed their sins because they want to be born again, either they are watching us online or they are in the service, Father, forgive them and give them the grace to become your son and your daughter in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray for every one of us in the service. We have wondered perhaps in our nature. We have wondered and become, you know, uh, distracted and attracted through lust in our speech pattern, tendencies, attitudes. But we have seen today that your nature is better than the nature that we have inherited. So I pray that the precious blood of Jesus, Lord, the precious blood of Jesus, let it flow right now. Let it flow right now. Every one of you, under the sound of my voice, in your heart, receive the blood of Jesus. Be cleansed from every dark nature, every Adamic nature, every sinful nature, every nature you have cried and prayed about. Let them be taken away in the name of Jesus. Let a new nature be given to you. And the evidence that the new nature has been given to you as I'm praying right now is that some of you are going to experience joy. Joy, 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 joy. As, a, as an evidence that the new nature has been given to you, receive joy in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to walk not just in repentance, in righteousness and restitutions in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Lord, I pray for myself that this word will not stand against me on the last day. I pray for everyone that has had me as well, that this world will not stand against them on the last day. Thank you, faithful Father. Bless everyone that is watching us online. Bless everyone that is in the service this morning. Bless even those who will be watching through the YouTube. And let your name be glorified. 
let us not recover from the experience and the encounter that we have had from your word today in Jesus name. Amen. And none of us who has read the story of Zacchaeus who have laughed over the story of Zacchaeus this morning. Some of us have even laughed about his height. I'm sure we would love to spot him out in heaven. Please Lord, let us get to the same heaven where Zacchaeus is right now. So that we can laugh with Zacchaeus in heaven at last. For Zacchaeus had made it and we will make it as well in Jesus' name. Clap your hands and celebrate.
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Charles and Pastor Mrs. Moreneke. You've been a great blessing to us. Um, for me and my family, you guys have been wonderful. It's beautiful to have you here. And I pray the blessing and the grace of God shall continually abound upon you and everything you put your hands upon and upon your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, Lord, we thank you. We say, Lord, be your name over your lives. We say, the grace to continually do the wonderful work of God. May, the, may God abound upon you. And the, and the oil of greatness shall never cease upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We just thank you for everything we've done and there's a small choice in our lives. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just honor you guys. Thank you so much. Silence every distraction and attraction, all lost in your life in Jesus' name. That you will live in peace with the Almighty. 
and you be a true child, true son and daughters in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Father, we bless the food in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's share the grace in fellowship. Once you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forever. God bless you in Jesus' name. See you next week, Sunday. Thank you for watching. We hope you were blessed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends.